Hey Kangaroos, what's up? It's your buddy Roo, and welcome to Volume 4 of Dead Rising. Now, this series is going really great so far. I'm really enjoying doing these videos. It's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy watching them too. And I'm not going to talk too much in this intro. I just want to go ahead and talk more about the game. What did we do in the last episode? We had a little fight with Isabella. We found out that the guy behind the outbreak is her brother Kalito. And we returned to her to the save room where Brad put her under DHS custody and wants to interrogate her. So today we're going to talk about K6 and K7. This is going to be a lot of fun. A lot of action is going to happen. So why don't we jump right in? K6 starts with Isabella being interrogated by Brad. And during this interrogation, she reveals that there was no drug trade in Santa Capesa, that there was an illegal research facility run by the US government. And the people there were trying to create better livestock. They wanted to improve the breeding of cows. Or is it cattle? I don't know how to English. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? During these experiments, they uh, stumbled upon a parasite, or they created a parasite that turns things into zombies. I don't know how zombies can improve livestock, but that's not important right now. Dr. Barnaby actually admits to these experiments and that they created these parasites, that the government created these parasites, and that one of these wasps that infects the people, escape, the people of Santa Cabeza turned into zombies. And of course, the US military rolled in, killed almost everybody in the village. And that's the reason why Kalito is all doing this. He wants to, he wants the world to know what happened at his hometown. He wants revenge. And that's the backstory. That's the reason for the zombie outbreak. I told you so. I told you it's, it wasn't a drug that turns people into zombies. During this interrogation, Dr. Barnaby dies. He turns into a zombie and gets killed by Brad in a really badass fashion. Move. And that's all it is to K6. That's a really short case. It's just a cutscene. So we're gonna continue around with K7. That is called Last Resort. This is my last resort. Yeah, cool. After Frank and the gang learns the truth behind the outbreak, Kalito is making this announcement over the PA system of the mall that he's sorry, he apologi apologizes to Isabella and says that he has to take extreme measures. Isabella reveals that he hit bombs in the tunnel underneath the mall and wants to blow the whole place up. Now Kalito is not only doing that to kill everyone in the mall, he also wants to spread the lava of the zombies. Olavi? I don't know how to pronounce it. He wants to spread the virus or the parasites all over the all over the country and he uses this bombs to achieve that. So Frank and Brad head into the tunnels. Frank is collecting the bombs. He succeeds in collecting all of them and keeping them from blowing the whole mall up. While all of this is happening, Brad is fighting Kalito. He gets stabbed in the back by Kalito. And he gets uh, locked into the tunnels with all the zombies in there. And it looks pretty bad for him. Somehow Brad manages to fight off all these zombies. But of course he dies. He gets his gut ripped out. All the zombies pull his gut out. He's dying. He's, oh no, don't tell Jessica about this. And after he turns into a zombie, Frank has to finish the job. And that's K7. That's all it is to K7. At least for the story portion. And I want to make a little cut here because I haven't been talking about the different endings of Dead Rising. There are, I think there are five different endings you can get or can achieve in a playthrough. And one of them is the ending B. It's the good ending, it's considered a good ending. And to get this ending, you don't finish all the cases in time. But the important part is that you don't finish case eight. If you finish case eight, you're gonna get ending A. So that's why I'm going to talk about ending B now. If you let the time run out, if you don't complete jamming device after doing this whole bomb thing, uh, you're going to get ending B. After surviving until noon on Friday, the helicopter will return and pick Frank back up. He's talking to the pilot. Can we take more survivors with us? They leave Willa Matt and they never find, they never truly find out what was behind the zombie outbreak because there's still a little something to it and that's the end of the story Frank saves the survivors 
he got a story he's gonna get some time in the limelight and that's ending b that's not the true ending there is a canon ending to it and we're gonna talk about it in the next episode with the story of K6 and 7 out of the way, let's take a look at the side scoops, the side activities you can do during this time. There are three more psychopaths that occur on day 3. The first of them is Sean, the cult leader. You can fight him during the scoop, the strange group. Uh, his boss fight isn't that interesting. Uh, the only interesting thing is his death scene. And again, if you are going for the Saint achievement, you want to do this because you can save five survivors. Carrying on, there's also the final confrontation with Kant, the photographer. And there are two possible ways how this fight is going to play out. If you show up five minutes after noon, he's going to capture Frank. He's going to strip him, he's going to chain him up. Again, it's going to be just like in kindergarten. And he's going to fight him. Now there's a restricted area in this fight, since you're chained up. Frank also loses all his weapons, all you can use are the things around you. It's a pretty tedious fight. So I highly implore you to show up at noon. You're gonna interrupt Kant as he's trying to zombify a person and take a picture of the zombification. Uh, the fight is pretty easy with the Mega Blaster. He's not that difficult with a handgun or a melee weapon either. He's a pretty weak character, pretty weak boss. and. You're going to be rewarded with another survivor, with Ted. The last psychopath I'm going to talk about today is Paul, Paul Carson. Carson. <laughs> Sounds like arson. And he fights you with fire. That's pretty clever, the Capcom. Pretty clever. Well, his scoop is called Long Heard Punk. It's in the Wonderland Mall in a clothing store. And it seems that he's having a nervous breakdown. He's, oh, why are you laughing at me? Why is everyone making fun of me? Yeah, that's basically it. You can fight him, you can let him die, because he's going to set himself on fire on accident. And if you choose to put out the fire to save him, he's gonna join you with the other two survivors you can save. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all that is to Paul. There's not much to say about him. He's just throwing a Molotov cocktails at you or throwing that little explosive at you that you can easily dodge. And we talked about almost all the psychopaths in this game. There are only two more uh, that are tied into the story. So we're going to talk about them in the next episode. What else is there to tell you? Yeah, right. There's uh, one more survivor. The last survivor in this game. She's called Simone. Her scoop is called, I do believe, A Woman in Despair. Yeah, it's called A Woman in Despair. And she's going to be important for another scoop. And that's pretty much everything I can tell you today, since everything after this point is playing into the ending of the game. And I don't want to uh, split the ending into two different videos. Talking about it would be too long for this video. So I'm gonna end it here. That was a pretty compact, nice episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by leaving a comment or hitting the like button. If you want to become a Kangabro today, do so by hitting the subscribe button. And then I'm gonna see you in the next episode. That's probably going to be the last one regarding Dead Rising. Oh, I can't wait. After we're done with Dead Rising, we can move on to Dead Rising 2. That's going to be great. Nevertheless, this is Roos signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs>